Hello students, I wanted to make a video to show you guys uh, the basics of observational drawing so that we can practice this in class. So, when observational drawing, please consider the following tips. When you draw, draw using light lines. Pressing too hard with your pencil will leave residual lines even after you erase. But if you draw lightly when you erase, you won't see any of the residual lines because you didn't put too much pressure on your pencil, okay? Um, when drawing, you'll have to erase a lot. It's a big part of making art, so there's no pressure to get it right the first time. Because you need to erase a lot, drawing lightly is quite important uh, when you're observational drawing. Another thing is to draw large. Get in the habit of eliminating negative space, especially for the zoomed in view like Giorgio O'Keeffe's style. Um, it can also be very intimidating to draw something complex with lots of different components to it. But when you break down what you are drawing into basic shapes first, you can add detail and refine the look after you map out the most basic shapes in the beginning. Lastly, using light lines to color block or make areas where the color change is evident, that might be helpful to set yourself up for success. And if you have no idea what I mean, I will be explaining these things as we watch the video. The first thing I did in my artwork was draw a circle because that is the middle point where all of my petals and all of the long stamens meet in the middle. So I represented that by drawing a little circle. The next thing to do would be to start mapping out where to put your petals. So if you notice in the video here, I draw the petals that are in the front first and then the ones that are in the back and being overlapped last. So the first thing you should do is not focus on the exact shape of the petal, but just kind of block out the basic shape that you see first, and then you can add the details of the petal afterwards. One of the easiest ways to show space and depth in art is overlapping things. So especially in this case of this reference photo, it's a good idea to try to get in the habit of trying to show what petals are in front and what petals are behind and being overlapped. So now that you have your basic petals blocked out, you'll be able to draw where they meet in the middle. And that would be where you utilize the circle that you drew in the middle in the beginning. I also wanted to draw a few lines to show where to put the stamens that also come from the middle of the circle. Um, I represented those with just a bunch of lines, again, not adding too much detail, because once I'm done fixing the shape of the petal and making it more accurate to the picture, then I'll be able to kind of focus on those stamens, the long thingies, and then I'll be able to draw those in more detail at the very end. Once I draw the basic shape of the petal, it's a bit easier to figure out how to make it a little bit more detailed and more accurate to the picture. So what I do is I kind of just go over my lines and try to make sure that it looks pretty accurate. I'll redraw maybe a slightly darker than the light lines I drew in the beginning, just so I know what to keep and what to erase. Again, though, not drawing super, super dark, just so I don't get that residual line at the end. Um, it looks like some of the petals, in fact, kind of curl over or kind of twist and fold so that you see the underside of the petal. This is quite difficult to draw, but what I do um, to make it easier for myself is I will draw the top of the petal first. And then once I've drawn that top part accurately, I'll then start to try to draw that underside, but only after I draw the top. Because if you try to draw the underside before you try to draw the top and you don't have the top correct, it's not going to work. So once you have the accurate top of the petal correct, then you can kind of draw that little underside of the petal where it folds and twists. Just a friendly reminder, folks, to draw the petals that are on top first. Um, it'll make your drawing a bit more accurate to the reference photo if you start drawing the ones that are um, overlapping the ones behind first, okay? So this petal that I'm drawing now also has a bit of that bottom side showing, the underside of the petal. So once I draw, drew the top correctly, then I would just kind of draw that little um, underside of the petal afterwards.
So the third petal that I draw isn't actually too bad. It's not that difficult of a shape once you get the basic one down. All you have to do is kind of just fix that part on the left there to make it have a little bit of a curve to it. And then you can just follow that curve down to the middle. Um, that one has a pretty thin and tapered um, look once it gets to the middle part. But yeah, that petal's not too bad. And then you can just kind of erase any of the excess lines just so um, you know you can make your drawing nice and neat and not get too confused with uh, excess lines. The top petal isn't too bad either. You've just got to draw uh, and fix the basic shape so that it has uh, two kind of bumps on either side of the petal and it looks almost like a valley kind of um, in the middle of that petal there. There's two bumps on the outside and it kind of flattens out in the middle there. And once you add color to this drawing, we're going to be able to use this drawing for some uh, pastel practice. Uh, you'll be able to kind of see that real nice there that it kind of has that pink ridge to it uh, in the valley. So after that, I kind of wanted to try to start doing that color blocking thing I told you guys about in the original tips and tricks section. I like to kind of use light lines to divide my flower petals so that when I eventually add color to this, I'll know what parts are going to be for the you know case of this specific reference photo, which parts are going to be pink and which parts are going to be more yellow. And then I'll kind of talk more about blending once I um, make a video about trying to blend this flower. But yeah, blocking out the color like that is quite helpful because then, you know, you don't have to guess when you're putting the pastels down and then you don't have to worry about accidentally ruining your drawing because you're winging it. You're kind of prepping um, the flower petals so you know exactly where to put the color. It's quite useful and a nice tool to use when you're drawing things that have a lot of color in it. For this next petal that we're going to draw, it's going to be nice to be able to kind of show where it, um, you know, starts in the middle by where the stem is. And then I kind of just continue working on, again, since this one has a bit of um, that underside showing, I try to get the top part of that petal down real good. And I try to get that shape pretty accurate to what the top of the petal looks like before I add that bottom section where it shows the underside of the petal. So you can kind of work on that under side again once you have that top part down real nice and then it's not as intimidating not too bad when it folds and twists like that Next, I'm going to do the color blocking thing, and I'm using a light line to differentiate between where I'm putting the pink pastels and where I'm putting the yellow pastels with the last and final petal, I do the same thing as the one on the other side. I kind of try to draw a little line showing where the petal starts in the middle by the stem, where the circle is. And then I end up trying just to um, fix the outer shape of the petal just by kind of making it more accurate to the picture. And because this one has an overlap, again, I'm just going to try my best to get the top side of the petal uh, first before I try to draw the underside that shows the bottom. So just kind of trying my best to create that shape as accurately as I can um, with some nice lines. And then I'll go ahead and create the underside of the petal after. And because this one folds a bit um, and it kind of has a nice curved line at the edge, you're going to try to have to just do your best to make that nice and curvy. And then you can go in and do the underside of the petal, just kind of making a small shape to represent how it folds and how you can see that little under bottom side of the petal. I wanted to add the last little section of color blocking to the last petal here where I'm just going to differentiate again where to put the pink and where to put the yellow. At this point, you can erase the circle and any excess lines that you have since now you basically have the majority of this flower done. We just got to draw the stamens so you can go ahead and erase any extra lines or excess lines that you have. 
The last thing to draw for this practice uh, picture would be the stamens, or those long thingies coming from the middle. So what you can do is just draw some lines, um, kind of just taking a look at maybe the direction of where they're pointing, and just make the line a little bit thicker. I try to use a little bit of a darker line, not super dark to the point where it's like, you know, pressing really hard, but I try to draw it a little bit darker just so I know what to erase and what not to erase, because once I'm done drawing the stamens, I want to be able to use the edge of my eraser and just erase any of the stuff in the middle so that I can just tell where each stamen is individually. So just kind of draw a little bit thicker of a line and then you can draw the little oval thing at the top that's the actual stamen there. So just drawing the stalks and then the little ovaly part and then you should be good to go. Um, I think there are about six of them on this reference photo um, and then you should be able to be done with your uh, with your practice drawing here. Alrighty, so that's about it, folks. Hopefully we were able to do that relatively successfully. You know, no worries if it doesn't look exactly like the photo. It's okay. I just want you to be able to try your best to get this thing done so that we can just practice some observational drawing. If at all you ever need any help with this, I would love to help you during office hours or in class sometime if we have a little bit of working time to practice. So just let me know if you need any extra help and I'd be happy to give it to you, okay? Um, good luck with your drawing and uh, let me know how it goes. I'd love to see your progress.